Hey everybody, this is Bluebee Man, and this is video one of the series of the markups list and custom columns. In this video, we're gonna go through a few things um, that are gonna revol revolve around adding data inside of the custom columns, um, working with say a design icon and also a takeoff type icon. But what I want you to, to take away from this video isn't that I'm an expert of showing you exactly what I'm gonna talk about today as far as um, the, I'm gonna go and do something with doors. I'm not an expert on doors, but I'm gonna show you all the available methods to you. And then once you know the methods, you can start to imagine, okay, what can I do with this? How can I apply this to my trade, to my field, right? How can I build a custom column set? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at two things. One is I'm gonna click this door down here and I'll put this door on the page. This is a door, you know, this is an architectural door swinging this way, right? Now, if I want to, let's just say I'm gonna place these doors on an architectural plan, I want to count up a bunch of stuff. Again, here is, it's just an example. I'm gonna to go to my columns and I go to manage columns and I'm gonna to to custom. And the first one I wanna build is, I'm gonna say lock type. I wanna know the lock type. Okay, lock type. And we're gonna talk in this video, this is gonna be the custom column about choice. We're gonna talk about choice in this one, okay? So on the choice, the first one I always add is a space and then I click OK. The reason to do that is because I always want to have an option for blank. The next one I'm going to add is I'm going to go lever set. And the next one I will go ahead and just put say like panic bar, panic bar. And then the last one, maybe mortise lock, mortise lock. Okay. If you don't know about locks, no big deal. This is just an exercise. Okay. Then I'm going to click OK. So that one's done. That, that column is now going to populate here. The next one, I'll go hinge type, hinge type. And then we'll change that to a choice. And then I got to go add, space, enter, add. And we'll go standard hinge, standard hinges. And then I'll say um, power transfer hinges. Hinge. Okay. Now again, if you are a locksmith, please don't judge me. I'm not a lock expert. I'm just doing this as an example. And then the next one, so we got the lock, we got the hinge, we got the um, power transfer hinge. So I'm gonna go, okay, so I got my lock, I got my hinge type. And what should we do next? Oh, I should say, um, you know, let's just call it like that. So here we go, I click okay and boom, there we go. So now there's two things I can do. This is just a single door, so I can leave that that subject or I can change this to um, you know, door type let's see to type a and then over here I can double click and I can choose okay this is on my drawing I took this design icon I put it here and then I want to say oh you know what is this door type oh it's a lever set and it's a hinge type it's gonna have I can make this bigger too so the things will populate this will have um, a standard hinge so now I know that I have this door type. Well, let's say I want to make another door type. What do I do? Well, I could take this door type and I could right click. I could copy it and paste it. And this is say door type B. So I'm gonna make door type B here, okay? And door type B is gonna have um, a panic bar and it's gonna have power transfer hinge, okay? So now these two icons. Well, why did I just do that? Well, one is I want to show you that you can build these custom columns and you can build custom icons but not only just building columns and icons, but then you can put the data in them, then add them back to your tool set. So now, um, if I just just because I like to play around in the my tools, I can now go and go down here to my arrow, select both of these, right click, and add them to my my tools. So now I have door type A and door type B. Now I want you to watch something. Now that I just made those and I put the data in, which you can also see in the settings uh, properties area, it's the same area down here. They give you the ability to do the drop downs in the properties area. But now that those are done and I'm gonna go do a design and I have those door types preset up, what I can do is every time I now click on the page, you'll notice that all the data that came with it when I added it to the tool chest is now inherent in that icon. So think about all the ways you could save or bundles you could create or icons you could make that apply to your industry that you could add multiple data sets in addition to that so that you can then count those after the fact because now I know I have X amount of door types A, X amount of door types B. Now in a real world scenario, I would typically have these denoted something like maybe a little call out or they're a different color 
or there's some kind of symbolism on the page that can tell me which one's which. I mean, I could find out which one's which just by selecting here, but normally you, you get what I mean. The, what I wanna show you here today is there's, there's two really cool things. One is you can build a bunch of icons without any data, and then as you add them on the drawing, you can then go change the data set, or you can build custom markups, and then you could create these um, custom column sets if you have the ability to standardize, and then you can enter all the data in. And now that it's in here, it's really easy to get to. And then you can add them back to a tool chest and then they carry all the data with them. Now this becomes extremely valuable when you get into a takeoff scenario. In a takeoff scenario, let's just say you wanted to get something like, um, I'm just gonna grab just an ellipse here. And I think there's, um, there's a cool little tip. If you hold down the Alt key, you'll draw a, uh, a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna make just a circle right there. And the circle, I will take, give it a fill color of say yellow. And then my line, I will bump up my line width a little bit higher to maybe there. So now this takeoff circle, this could be door A, right? So then I could go like this and go to my tool chest. And then I could say, if I wanna do takeoffs on doors, I'm gonna make this door type A. And if I know the door type A's have a specific set of devices per my site plans and I'm doing a takeoff, I can click on door type A. And then down here in my, um, in my custom column list, I can say door type A has lever set and it has standard hinges. So now I can go through my whole drawing set and everywhere I see door type A, I could take this and I could put, I could punch door type A all over the drawing. And then what this does is when I go back to my markups list at the end, I could see that if I wanted to see, hey, you know what? How many door type A's do I have? I could filter by door type A and there you go. And if I click on hinge, I see I have 15 hinges and I have 15 locks and I can go back to subject, right? So it's pretty cool when you look at um, another part um, about the custom columns is when you click on the custom columns here, it'll filter by your, um, by you know whatever devices are in this category. So if you have four different types of devices in this category and you wanna count them up and that need to go in a proposal for whatever reason, you could then just click on the header and you'll see standard hinge, power transfer hinge, lock type, you know, lever set, panic bar. You can put that in a proposal, put that in a quote. You can get access to that information really quickly. You could also do things like, you know, you could sort by, you know, where the devices are in the rooms. You could sort by where they are in the levels. I could then go in, in some instances, I could say, okay, let's add another column to this list and go manage columns. And then let's say this building has levels and I want to sort my stuff by levels. And I wanna kinda, I like this choice thing. Again, I'm gonna add the space and I'm gonna add um, level one, right? And then sometimes if I'm doing multiple things, I'll just copy it and then I'll add and then go paste two. Okay, paste three, paste four. I always try to make things easier if I'm doing things that have a lot of repetition. Now I have my levels in there. And so let's just say that these devices up here where I can highlight them. And what's cool is if I highlight them on the drawing, I can go to my properties window. And what's great with the choice is I can now select the level that they're on. So that'll be level two. I'll select these guys. Again, this is, I'm just showing you the methods. This is not how I would normally do my job. Level three, and then I'll go like this and they'll say this is level four. And then if I go back to my markups list, I can very easily see graphically if I sort by level, which ones I didn't count. I'm like, oh, I missed level one. So I can click on these and say this is on a page, right? But at least I can graphically see that I missed something. With this selected on my markups list, I can go back to my properties tab and I can select level from here. So I'm gonna select level one. So now I have all my levels selected. Now what's really cool about this is I could sort by level and then I can do some, some more sorts. So I could say filter, and I wanna filter by all devices in level one. And then uh, obviously if you add more than just um, standard hinges on level one, you could clip up here and it would tell you how many devices do you have by level. So it's really, really neat as far as how much you can do with the choices. And once you start to get a handle on the choices, using the filters, sorting by subject, sorting by level, the more custom columns you can get inside of Bluebeam, the more data you can import into your drawings, into your PDFs, into your takeoffs, into your designs, 
and then you can extract that data at will, filter it graphically, get access to it, update it, collaborate with other people, and all the information is in here. And how cool is that, that it's only been a handful of minutes and you know you have now a document that has data that you can search for. You could even type up here, panic, and it'll find all the panic bars just like that, it's really, really quickly. You can type in level one um, and it'll find everything on level one. So it's almost like embedding Google searchable data inside of your PDF. And the choices are really cool. Now I told you before, on the choices for the custom columns. I always wanna make sure that I do a space as the first choice. And I do that because sometimes you just wanna set it back to blank. You don't want anything in there. So it's always a good thing. That's kind of a little thing that I've always done um, is I've always set that to uh, a blank. So that is the choice custom columns list. It works great because if you have some kind of standards, if you work for a company that has the same parts and pieces that get quoted and proposed and estimated over and over and over and over again, and then there's small incremental changes made to those parts and pieces or to that scope of work over time, you could very easily build out a really awesome tool chest with all your icons with all the data in there with all the custom columns and whenever you got a new plan or a new takeoff or a new design set all you had to do is your tool chest remain static once you get the pdf um, you basically go into the spanish columns you export your custom columns list right when you got all the data in there and then because remember it's holding all of the the vertical columns and all of the data here in the choices and then you click import and you import that file into the new drawing. And then all that data is also embedded into all the icons in your tool chest. And so everything's gonna work flawlessly every single time. It's totally cool. Um, definitely what you wanna do is kinda begin with the end in mind. Say, where do we wanna end up? What kind of data do we wanna extract at the end? What is a, a final takeoff or a final design or a final data set look like? And how do we reverse engineer and bring that back into a custom column model and, and custom columns built into our tools so that we can leverage Bluebeam to the max capacity. And hopefully whatever work you do has so much information in it that when the next party, the next team, the next group gets access to it or you get access to it, say a month later when it resurfaces, you're very, it's very easy and efficient to get back to square one to go find that information versus if you just scribble stuff on, on a PDF, on a piece of paper or a bunch of plans. Um, so that is the choice option in the custom columns list. And then some of the features that go into a designing icons that have embedded data, designing takeoff stamps. Obviously, if you have a whole video on takeoff stamps, just go to the, the comments below and there's a, a whole video in there on how to do this really cool takeoff um, model that I built. And, um, and other than that, just have at it. If you have any questions, if you have any video requests, please mention them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. Please share this video with other Bluebeam users that would like to understand how to use the choices field and feel free to ask any questions. I'd love to answer them. And it would be really neat to start making some videos that are more directed towards people that are looking for uh, you know ideas on how to improve their workflows using the markups list and the choices in the custom columns. Have a great day, everybody. Bluebeam man out.